see my work on set, and it's, it's really surreal. I've never been to a TV set before, and uh, they recreated my painting, um, or APF did, in the way that they normally make the prints for my, my work, and they made them next to life size, and they used this inkjet process that looked an awful lot like my painting, to the point that I really uncanny. I was like, oh my gosh, there it is in the set. And um, so I visited the set, and it was, and what's amazing about these sets is that they, when you when you step into them, they really feel like you know, even though there's lights and you know things around, you immediately feel like you're transported into that you know imaginary world that you're seeing. Like I'm, if I look at you know Blair's uh, closet with all the shoes stacked up, or you know whatever it was, it's just it's kind of um, the definition of surrealism.
see at red carpet events that uh, name, uh, name check the top 10 uh, most desired uh, luxury brands. And so that kind of fed back into it and then opened up the potential for my new films, which uh, you know, have uh, literally and directly, not just from uh, you know, reflecting on these people, but I, I made a film with Lindsay Lohan uh, recently and with um, the former adult performer, uh, Sasha Gray. And so I made two films that um, debuted at the opening of the Venice Biennale and exist online for anyone to see at any given time uh, on the Gagosian YouTube channel. They were released, instead of waiting for the New York Times to comment on the film, I worked with a publicist and we released the films through the front page of the New York Times websites and through the front page of W Magazine's uh, website. So instead of um, appropriating work from media and commenting on it, um, what I've endeavored to do with this newer body of work is, is make the media and actually project it through those instruments of, uh, of, of web media and, um, and publicity that are, are out there and kind of uh, created some content once more. What is um, the art world um, in general kind of thing about and also, I'm really curious, too, about how the London audience responded to The Most Wanted, because it was, was it, it was mostly American um, stars that were featured. With the exception of yes, I was told to ask you to move the microphone. This way?
billboards, they decided to put a billboard on a, on a barge and then show commercials. And so I was uh, asked by a curator, would you make a commercial? And I had never made a film, and I, said, but I said, sure, I'll do that. It happened that um, I had made a, a painting at Lindsay Mocha um, from the summer before, and uh, a friend of mine put me in touch with her because she liked the painting and maybe we could collaborate. And so we began texting these little texts, you know, like, about meeting to make a thing, a test, you know, or something like that. So, um, in the meantime, I was asked about the film, and so I asked her if she'd be interested in making a film, um, you know, a very short film. And so then that came together um, in the midst of all that was going on in her life. We carved out a bit of space and made this film, and then decided to proactively release it on YouTube and through the internet. Which, as a painter and somebody who shows in galleries and various the museums, you sort of think like, well, well what's that about? And, and what it was is to say that that space, you know, in, in the space in terms of media, you can deliberately choose to occupy that space and, and speak from it. The way that, you know, Gossip Girl, not only as a, as a drama, but in the way that the works in the show and the curating of the contemporary culture on that show um, and the immediate response to the culture um, can, can happen. So I felt like, yes, you can proactively engage the media and, and not just have art be a passive um, decoration on the, in, in, at a venue, but actually change the terms in which we think about media and we think about uh, those who we celebrate and those who we, um, we don't. And so that was, a, uh, that was a, in essence, a, um, a way of trying to change that. Did you um, have a lot of uh, people asking you about Elizabeth Payton and, you know, if you had any kind of connection to her sort of loving portraits of male celebrities that she's done in the past. I know that you painted them really differently than she does. She kind of gives these, like, vignettes into their world and you have them up against the stuff and repeat. But it makes a connection. And I know that you've done the towels for Target and Elizabeth Payton's done the towels for Target. And Oh, is it? Yeah. 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 So I'm mean, I mean, no, so This is actually the first time that that comparison has been made, but it's, <laughs> but, it, but it's an interesting, it's an interesting it one. Yeah. And you know, what the difference that I would say is that, you know, whereas I think what's wonderful about um, Elizabeth's work is that it, it kind of humanizes that the culture. I mean, through you know her, um, you know, sensitive rendering of. My, my work actually has a lot to do with the dehumanization, the dehumanization of that culture. I mean, in a way, in some cases, where you're seeing emblems of power, emblems of projection of media, media power. And the difference that my new film um, or films made is that it actually took into account the individual in a very real way, like in an inescapably real way. I mean, working with Lindsay in the midst of uh, a lot of um, things that were going on in her life. And making a motion portrait of her. So it was literally taking the idea of my paintings and then turning it into a, a, a living uh, portrait. I mean, it, since it's 90 seconds, it just it happens, but it, it talks about, um, you know, a kind of power and transformation that can happen by, you know, focusing on those individuals. So in a way, yeah, I think it's an interesting comparison, but the, the difference is it's like how it's one, of, one is passive and the other is like proactively engaging. Do you think that the um, viewers for the videos, and I don't know if, um, if, if many of you have seen the films, but um, they're a little racy. Um, you know, they're not too racy, no, but, but there's but definitely... The paintings are a lot more racy. But they're certainly, um, oh, I don't know, slightly sexually suggestive. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you feel like um, the the nature of that and then sort of showing them on the internet like through YouTube or anything has actually in a way helped to reach a larger audience because there's that sort of um, I think the, the teenage Rossi. boy yeah there's the eroticism yeah. but I think the teenage boy and the teenage girl thing um, with Gossip Girl and yeah. with a lot of others is really strong and I, I have teenage cousins in Moscow 
in Copenhagen and in Scotland, and they all watch Gossip Girl, yep. and they love it. Yep. Like, and they, they adore it, and they talk about all the intrigue and everything that's going on there, and then, you know, Lindsay Lohan, it, it, she's sort of like a teen fantasy gone car wreck, you know? Um, <laughs> and, uh, I don't know if that's a very way to describe her, but, I mean, is there, do you, I'm not sure if that's a quite a question, but, I mean, I, well, I mean, I, I received a lot of criticism um, about my Sasha Gray film from people who said, why didn't she make a pornographic film with her? I mean, like, yeah. why do you have Sasha Gray? Why didn't she do that? Like, are you crazy? I mean, what is wrong with you? And in fact, um, she was retiring and has retired um, from the adult uh, performance uh, industry. And we were about, it was, the film was really about that transformation. You know, it reflects on that. She is, uh, you know, uh, tremendously talented and, and kind of you know, incredible beacon for, you know, um, you know, freedom of thought in, in, in that area of our lives. Um, and I have, I have the utmost respect for that. And so the film really kind of shows that uh, respect in, in, in a really clear way. And, and with Lindsay, it's the same thing. I mean, you know, she has absolute uncommon beauty. And it's, uh, it's, you know, you think of Marilyn Monroe. This is something that she actually possesses, and she's also a really talented actress. And, you know, I would say uh, in terms of like you know train wreck or this or that. Listen, if, if somebody had like a unending spotlight on me when I was 25 years old, yeah. I'd still be in jail. I mean, <laughs> Um, showing. 